What is up my ninjas, I'm Strident and welcome to my most fun and most unfun of 2018. Um, I think this is what, the third or fourth one we've done? So yeah, this is becoming a little bit of a tradition here. Um, I figured I would get away from, stay away from the, the typical list where we just say this was the best of this year because I said so, you know. Um, I feel like fun factor is a thing that needs to be focused on so much more with all the stresses of day-to-day -day life. If you're collecting figures, it's so that you can escape a little bit. And how can you escape if you're not enjoying what you escape to or with? You know what I mean? So um, I think it's really important to enjoy playing with these figures and in order to enjoy playing with them, they have to be fun. And uh, I should have put that Kazoo Kid remix right there. Fun, 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 fun. But anyway, um, yeah. I mean, a more skilled editor would do that, but you know, it's about the figures and about, you know, the, the, the journey with them. Uh, so, this year has been a weird year for me. Lots of ups and downs, lots of uh, stress. But, uh, man, if, if ever I needed my happy place, <laughs> this year was that year. So, um, I spent a lot of time actually, you know, handling a lot of these figures. Um, and I figured that it's only fitting that I, you know, put some shine on the ones that I found to be the most fun. And unlike most of my reviews these days, the ones that I didn't find that fun. Um, there's a couple figures on here, actually more than a couple that I didn't review, but you know, some of them, it, it just, I didn't really feel like doing it. And plus it goes against what my new, uh, uh, my new mantra was, you know, only reviewing the, the stuff I love essentially. Um, these, this list is based on figures that I acquired in 2018. A lot of them are figures that I also reviewed in 2018. So it's not about the figure being, you know, released in 2018 like some of the other channels do. You know me, this is how I get down. Um, if, if this doesn't work for you, you know, there's plenty of other channels for you guys to check out um, and have fun with, you know. Um, this is all for the fun, and we're going to jump into it right now. So, as we've done in past years, I am going to go over the most unfun first. Now, unfun means I did not have a whole bunch of fun with these figures. They were lacking in some way that did not uh, uh, compel me to constantly go back and play with them, pose them, look at them, etc., etc. Now, <clears throat> some of these figures are uh, higher end figures, and some of them are just basic figures, but you'll see. They're figures that just missed the mark for me. So here we go. Five. So we're gonna start with a twofer, and it is both of them are multiverse figures. It's the multiverse uh, Martian Manhunter. I think that's from the uh, Clayface wave, and the multiverse Justice League movie Flash. <clears throat> both of them were really good sculpts that were a huge improvement over what the multiverse line had looked like up to that point. The problem was articulation was severely lacking. Um, and the articulation that was there wasn't done very well. Um, the neck joint on the Martian Manhunter was just fucking horrible. I mean, like, just, just awful. It would bounce back when I pose him. So to, to get him to look down, it would look down and you'd see it slowly rising back up. And that's a complete no-no. Um, other than that, he's just angled weird. He always is either hunching or leaning back too far. His hands are in a kind of meh position, so punches look weird. He just doesn't have what I need for him to be good in the sculpt department. And it's a shame because I have needed a movie Martian Manhunter because they neglected him in the... Uh, Justice League stuff, the DCEU Justice League. So when I saw Supergirl and I saw Martian Manhunter pop up, I was like, damn, I got to have that figure. And so I ended up putting him on eBay so that I could get 
the DC Collectibles one, which lacks the articulation, but the sculpt is so good that I had to get that and ignore, you know, whatever shortcomings because the sculpt was so much better than this one. So much. Even the colors, they, the fact that they use gray instead of black, the fact that, you know, the blues and the reds are more vibrant, it just makes the figure stand out more. So this version is a pass. If you see this figure, please avoid it. Now, if you can't afford a better figure, and this is all that's available to you, then by all means, get it so you have the representation. But if you are a you know hardcore collector, this will not be for you. And the same thing goes for this Flash. I like the Flash. I even like this costume, the more I thought about it, you know, for Flash year one. But it's not a great Flash figure. I mean, I had to really work to get these poses, and he just does not have the range of motion. I mean, like, bending his arms, that's as far as he can bend his arms. I mean, it's, it's a pitiful showing from DC, from Mar uh, Mattel. They just kind of cashed in, and, you know, that bothers me because they can do better. Um, especially when you see the Aquaman figures, you'll be like, fuck, they can do way better. And that's literally what you have with this. So I got him as a stand-in for the... Uh, figure arts version which i think is one of the best figures that i've played with in a long time um, everything that this figure can't do obviously the figure arts can and this one i mean they didn't give you extra hands they eventually packaged him with an extra head which was the unmasked head which is nice but they didn't really give you anything else i mean i think one version of him has extra hands but it doesn't make up for the fact that he just can't. He can barely do the running poses. If I didn't know how to do a little bit of, you know, in-camera trickery, then, you know, this picture wouldn't look so cool, and I wouldn't have been able to really do anything with him at all. So this is a pass. Unless you need a placeholder for your movie Justice League, then get him, have him be your, fa your placeholder, and call it a day. If you can find the $10 version, that's even better because I mean it got about the same range of motion and that's sad considering those other ones have five points five six they have about nine points of articulation something like that um, but then you know they're 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 better for the money you're getting your money's worth and these guys are not this figure is not your money's worth the GI Joe figure subscription service rock and roll figure <clears throat> this is an example of what's wrong with the gi joe fandom right now and you know the fact that they're willing to just take whatever has the gi joe name on it the figure's so subpar and we could do better we shouldn't have had this there's no excuse considering i mean they've had years of details years of comics years of concept art to show that he needed to be buff he needed to be a thicker body, which they have, and he needed to be a little bit taller than the average Joe, or he could be short and be stocky. That's what you really felt like doing, but the key thing is that he had to look the part. Using Dusty, Pursuit of Cobra Dusty's body as a template for rock and roll was lazy, and that's everything that's wrong with Mattel or Hasbro these days. They're extremely lazy when it comes to the G.I. Joe line. Like, how did this come out and, and make it past you know, QC or the concepting phase. It looked cool in the concept vault, but he needed changes, you know? He needed to be bulked up, but like I said, just ignore this figure. I know many of you are like, what? A Mythic Legions figure? Yes, Mythic Legions. This is Gwendolyn Heaven's brand. If you saw my review, you probably know what my issues are with her. It's not that she's a bad figure. <clears throat> It's just that her shortcomings prevent me from going back to play with her as much as I did with my Saber 2.0, which is the grail standard. So it's kind of a hard act for any of the toys to follow, but she's in that wheelhouse. And for the price and for, you know, all the hype and all the, you know, Mythic Legions are super expensive. The fan base is super into them and they act like they can do no wrong and they act like these figures do all these things that other figures don't do i mean these figures they go for like three times sometimes twice what your standard uh you know retail figures go for but their articulation is essentially you know dated standard retail 
uh, articulation, you know what I mean? And in her case, being that she's one of the smaller ones, she has a lot of things going against her. The feet suck, the, the joints too slack, the uh, hands are made of softer plastic so they don't grip that sword as well as they can, and then the sword itself is engineered in a way that makes the hands bow out. So all these things worked against her, and that's why she's on the list. Two. Joy Toy, Takeway Mech, and the UNF or UNX Core uh, Trooper. These toys are based off of, and I'm being real nice about this because in reality it's not quite as simple as I'm making it, but for the sake of the review, they are based on designs and inspired by designs found in Titanfall 1 and 2. <clears throat> And they have a couple of their own designs sprinkled in there as well. But uh, these I was really excited about because I'm a mech fanatic, but they didn't work well together. And there was no indication based on, you know, preliminary or, or promotional images and such to let me know that these two wouldn't work together. If I see a mech and then I see people who are supposed to be able to go into the mech, you know, offered in the same line, and I see articulation on the mech to open it up so that you have room to put the guy in there, I'm assuming, you know, call me crazy, but I'm assuming that all the, the little dudes you create for this are going to be able to fit in there. There should be no restrictions. When I got the, 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 the UNF, UNX core uh, figure and I put him inside or tried to put him inside, he couldn't fit. Not with his book bag not, or backpack, not without <laughs> his book bag, not without his backpack, not without the jump pack, not without, you know, his legs. You know what I mean? Like, I was taking all kinds of stuff off to get him to fit, and it wouldn't work. And on top of that, he is so small. It's way smaller than what I expected, and they feel kind of fragile. And I know they're, they're, they've are they're upped their size in recent years, and they fixed cockpit space, so maybe the next one I get, I'll be more successful. You know, only time will tell. But, uh, you know, those things are why he's on the list. And my number one most unfun figure of last year. Player select Army of Two 40th Day, Salem and Rios by NECA. Now this is an older two pack from before NECA started adding the quality uh, articulation and we've come to expect from them. So um, I got this set, I wanna say the beginning of last year. And uh, I was really geeked about it, super geeked because I was still under the impression that they had articulation. I knew they had less, but I thought they had the same amount of articulation that, you know, Jungle Extraction um, Dutch has, and many of the other Predator figures have, and you know, what the Terminator figures have. So, imagine my surprise when I got them, and I tried to move them around, and I see that literally the two of them have most of the articulation above the waist. And then from the waist down, it's literally a statue. I mean, there's swivels at the boots, but what good is that? And I think on uh, one of them, or maybe both of them, there's a swivel underneath one of the straps on their legs. So I was really disappointed. Like I said, I made the mistake of thinking that they had more articulation than, you know, they did. But, you know, it's NECA. And on top of that, I'm a huge fan of Clement Suave. He's the... Uh, character designer for this game. He also was the character designer for G.I. Joe Renegades. He's one of my favorite artists and uh, he passed away a couple years back so this was like kind of like a, a big deal for me and then the fact that they didn't quite live up. I mean sculpt wise they do but you know just as figures they're kind of like uh, so yeah this one was was heavy and it was you know it had to be my number one. And now we move on to the most fun of 2018. These are figures that I just could not stop playing with, or I played with them a lot in comparison to other figures. Uh, just, you know, figures I was compelled to mess with every time I walked by them on my shelf. So, here we go. Marvel Legends Black Panther Movie Wave. The first one. Um, the second one, I already know I'm going to love it, 
This one I loved because it gave us a new Black Panther, it gave us the new suit, which I'm not as big of a fan of as I am of the previous suit, um, but I dig it. And I dig how poseable this figure was. And this figure kind of helped me realize something that um, I'm starting to see solidified with the Black series. And it's that Hasbro has been making strides with their movie related figures that lessen the gap between the higher end import figures and the domestic market. So I don't have to necessarily shell out 40 bucks to get slightly more articulation with my figure arts versions of these same characters when these ones are almost just as posable and cost half the price. So I have to so much fun with them and I'm super, super looking forward to the second wave which comes out this year. Power of the Primes, Rodimus Prime. Um, I dig this figure a lot. I know it's not perfect. I know you can see the extra arms. I know the legs are becoming the part of the arms and there's all these issues with, you know, the way, the aesthetics of the figure. But when I was a kid, I had Rodimus Prime and I hated it. <laughs> and I always imagined having a Rodimus Prime that was a little bit more poseable and that just had more presence than what we got. Because essentially that one that we got, the classic G1 or G2 one was a, a, like a big popsicle. And I hated it with a fucking burning passion. This one, you get Hot Rod and parts, <coughs> excuse me, to turn him into Rodimus Prime, which is awesome. And it allows you to rewrite history. Hot Rod is a cool character who had a shit history. And I know you've seen him on my list before because I got a, uh, what was that, Titans Return Hot Rod. But this figure is just, it's pretty cool. It's a very cool basic toy, you know? And he fills the quota for just being fun. Because that's the thing that lacks a lot of these figures is that, not these on my list, but figures in general, is that they're, they look good, but they're not fun. This guy looks okay and he's fun. So that's why he's here. Bandai Robot Spirit Specific Rim Figures. Now say what you will about the movie, and the movie has its faults. These designs were dope. People said, oh, they look like action figures. Well, guess what? Here they are as action figures, and they work really well. The designs are awesome. They fix elements that were problems in the previous ones, and their overall designs lend themselves to being action figures, and I love it. Um, every single one of them. I'm still working on getting uh, uh, Obsidian Fury and uh, Guardian Bravo. But, I mean, they just look good. And then their articulation puts most humanoid, standard humanoid figures to shame. These guys can do all kinds of things. The joints are not restricted like the Diamond Select ones. <clears throat> they are on the small side, but if you've been collecting imports, that just is par for the course, so it's not a complaint if you know, you're know you used to that sort of thing. So you could have these guys going up against Gundams and other super robots that come out of Japan. And I love it. I mean, Pacific Rim was a homage to Japanese tokusatsu and mecha anime, so why wouldn't they fit in with Japanese stuff? So there you have it. The core new recruits so it kind of strikes me as strange how uh, a lot of collectors will constantly give the same figures props and ignore some of the other lines like I kind of feel sorry for those folks who have not been dipping into this I mean my sons and I play and you know just when I'm bored I like to go back and you know look at my Joe's and my core collection and you realize how much the core has done in the last couple years while G.I. Joe has been really stale even the quality of their fi their figures and the consistency of the figures these designs here are a testament to that <clears throat> it's like each batch of core figures is extremely consistent and fits really well with the previous bunch but it expands on the mythos these new recruits did a really good job doing that both on the curse side and on the core elite side as well. And I dig that because there's an evolution of the team with Rain becoming the leader and uh, 
new recruits joining the old ones. So you can decide who you want to be part of your, uh, your squad. You know what I'm saying? So I really dig what they've done. I dig the looks. The Four Horsemen did a good job actually kind of matching the style of the core and then enhancing the articulation. These guys are really uh, <clears throat> nicely posable. Um, not as much as your Joes, but they're almost there. I mean, some wrist articulation would go a long way for these guys. And that's really all you would need on these to make them true contenders for that G.I. Joe crown. Because, I mean, if we're being real, the core vehicles are already on par with, and in some areas, they blow G.I. Joe out of the water. Um, simply because they, they choose vehicles that Hasbro won't make. But uh, yeah, if these figures had a little bit more articulation, they would be way higher on my list. But the big thing about these guys is that they're just easy to pick up and fiddle with. You can just play with them. You can pose them on your desk or you know, on your shelf. Um, they're tough enough that if you have little kiddos at home, the kiddos can jump in and play with you. And you don't have to worry about like weapons snapping or you know limbs breaking on the figures. And I really appreciate that. That's a big part of how I appreciate my collection is what we can do together. I play with my sons. It's important for me to spend time with them. And you know, one thing I have to credit GI Joe and these uh, and the core and various 118 scale lines for is that it's something that me and my uh, kids we bond over. So having these new recruits for the core was pretty cool. My my five year old tends to lean more towards the co the core. They're chunky figures. They're not, like I said, they're not fragile, they're not brittle. Not to say the G.I. Joes are, but they're more brittle than these. So these were an easy, easy uh, contender for a spot on this list. Um, and yeah, they're my number 12. I really dig the core, and you guys should get into them too. Go check out my reviews on them. Tiger Stripe. Wolverine by Marvel Legends. Um, <clears throat> you know me. I'm a 90s kid. 90s X-Men was my shit. Jim Lee was my idol. I met Jim Lee in the 90s. He commented on my artwork. That's why I'm doing um, art as a profession right now. It was a dream. Bucket list item happened. This was the costume Wolverine was, re was wearing when I was reading X-Men along with the brown and tan. They gave us the brown and tan last year. This year they gave us the tiger stripe suit. It's pretty much all I was asking for. Now I just need to figure out a way to get, you know, different heads for the different unmasked heads for these Wolverines, and then I am set. I will make a uh, Wolverine in regular plain clothes, and then I'm good. I don't need anything else Wolverine after that. So he easily takes a spot on this list. Um, because I already have a bunch of Wolverines, it's not like there's anything about him that makes me want to only play with this one more. But seeing this suit, that's why I am usually kind of uh, inspired to play with this figure. And that's why he has a spot on this list. Seeing that Tiger Stripe suit is so nostalgic, and I'm not that big on nostalgia, but this hits it for me and it makes me want to play with him. So that's why he is on the list for sure. Mythic Legion's Advent of Decay, Hera, and Freya. These are my favorite of the bunch. Um, I play with them all the time, move them around all the time, look at the details. Hera almost took me by surprise because she's the one who, when I saw this design, I was like, holy shit, they're going out into this territory? This is what made me want to get the, uh, you know, get into this. So um, yeah, these, these, she's dope. Um, she doesn't suffer from exactly the same issues that, uh, uh, what's her name? It, uh, hell, what did they call Heaven's Brand? Gwendolyn Heaven's Brand. She doesn't suffer from exactly the same issues. I mean, there's some of them are there, like her staff being thick. You know, I, I went over all this stuff in the com I mean, wow, in the comments. <laughs> in the, uh, review I did on the girls that I picked up. Um, but her joints are nice and tight. She stands well. You know what I mean? I don't have issues with her. Same goes for Freya. Freya is tough, stands well, and I don't have to worry too much about her. 
tumbling over or anything. You know what I mean? Like, she's not going to fall over. She, I don't have any issues with that kind of thing with her. Um, she holds weapons that I put in her hands really well. Um, apparently, the weapons she has are not the ones that bow out somewhere in the middle or, you know, some area to make her hands lose their shape. So I don't have those issues with her. So I like to play around with her and Hera a lot. And I pose them and repose them. And I just look at them because design-wise, they're just top-notch. They're some of the best that the line has to offer easily. Marvel Legends, the first 10 years MCU figures. Um, I'm a movie collector, a movie figure collector. I'm a movie fanatic. And these figures represent what I have been wanting ever since I started collecting um, and Marvel movie figures with Blade. Um, Captain America, they, they, you know, the first Avenger came out in 11, 000, 2011. Wow, 2011, Jesus. 2011, it's been a while, you know what I mean? And we never got a Red Skull figure from Marvel Legends. We got one with Marvel Select. He's way out of scale, huge, lacked the articulation. This time, they gave us that. Then they went back and gave us all the other characters. They updated Cap. I mean, look at this face both with the mask and with the mask off. It's just, it's amazing. Same thing with this red skull. It's so on point and he's posable. It's literally the dream of any you know, superhero action figure collector that's interested in the film versions of these characters. So they had to be here. Batman missions, uh, mission masters, missions, Robin. It's a real cheesy name, but the line kind of adds to your collection, even though it is a kid's, you know, evergreen line. They gave us a Robin, who's clearly Tim Drake in a more modernized costume. It's a combination of the uh, Batman Arkham Knight design and several others, including what we see in Rebirth. So I'm digging it. I, I, I love it. And I play with him with my, uh, my son and... Uh, yeah, Tim, man, he's my favorite. Of course he'd be here. And, and you know, he's one of the ones that it seems like Jeff Johns and them don't like. But, you know, anytime he pops up, he seems to get decent figures because it seems like even the people making these figures dig the character and understand, you know, enough about him to translate it into figure form to make him a fun toy once you get him in hand. And that's what I love about this figure. He's just fun. Almost everything that uh, Hasbro has made Star Wars Black Series this year. Um, I didn't pick up everything because I'm not a fan of Star Wars like that, but I just, I don't know. Han and Chewie are my favorite Star Wars characters. More so Chewbacca than anyone else, but you can't have Han or Chewbacca without Han. There's got to be someone for him to bicker with, you know what I'm saying? And then... I watched Solo and I loved it. It wasn't like it was the greatest movie ever or anything like that. And I'm not this hardcore Star Wars person that's going to pick all that shit apart. But, you know, just to see where Han came from in a very <laughs> melodramatic kind of fashion. It was like, I didn't need this, but you did a good job doing it. And the designs were nice. Uh, everything worked. Um, I, I just like the look of these figures, man and they feel good, their articulation is on point. I mean, this is another one of those times where seeing these figures shows me how far Hasbro has come, and I always felt like every other line outside of Marvel Legends was a good indicator of how far Hasbro has come. But uh, this really shows you how far they've come. They, like, this is actually, these figures are contenders when you stand them next to the fucking uh, uh, figure arts versions, you know, and sometimes the Mafex versions as well. They don't have the same articulation, but I mean, sculpt wise, they're like right up there. Sometimes they get the sculpts better, like with Londo. And I can't stand fucking Donald Glover, but I dug this figure. And props to Little Strider because he was with me when I picked them up, and I almost didn't pick him up. I almost didn't get any of the supporting cast. I have almost everyone except for about two or three characters. But he was like, Daddy, this looks just like Londo. You should get it. And I was like, ah. And he was like, get it, come on, you should get it. 
and I'm cracking up because, you know, he's doing that thing that we do, but I'm glad I listened to him because, like, if the little kid could see it, you know, I should be able to see it too. And it, they, they did it. It's on point. Um, and this Chewie is fucking badass. You know what I mean? Like, how do you improve on Chewie? How do you make him look a little bit younger and more rebellious and, and interesting? You just add different accoutrements to him. Accoutrement to him and uh <laughs> you know make him look a little bit more battle hardened and i love it man it's like ah it's chewy it's perfect you know i have no problems with it and then i missed out on han the first time so when they announced that they were doing a best bin han figure i was like huh maybe i should get that one you know and then the day that i picked up almost everybody from the uh solo wave this guy was there i was like oh shit I, now I have a grown-ass uh, Han Solo to go with my grown-ass uh, Chewie. And I'm like, man, this is nice. I felt good because it was like I got some, I got a little bit more than what I was, you know, uh, counting on. You know, I wasn't expecting to find all this stuff. Plus, I had forgotten that they even, you know, that they had done this. You know, I was only looking at the, the Solo movie figures because you know me. Um, so, yeah, man, the sculpts, the paint... The articulation, the choices in molded plastic, it's just, it's, it's all here and I play with them on the regular, so they're in here. Mattel, Aquaman figures, Aquaman and Black Manta. But that whole wave is stellar. This is an example of what Mattel does when they give a shit. They hire people who know what they're doing and they let them do their job. The problem is that they, they hired people who know what they're doing and then they fired them. So they're going to end up back in a rut and they're going to try to reuse all these parts over and fucking over and over and over and over and we're going to end up with some shitty figures. But for now, just talking about them, holy shit. I mean, the improvement is just, it's staggering. It's staggering. It's not perfect, but considering that the previous versions of these figures were these guys and, you know, they've bumped it up to this and this is what they look like in the films holy shit holy shit that's all i could say holy shit number five you knew she was gonna be on here you had to know it's the uh, revel tech amazing yamaguchi psylocke i've been waiting for a good psylocke figure like better than good like a sexy you know arrogant ass female ninja and that's what we got here she has that kind of feel to her. If you pose her right, she's posable enough so that she can do whatever you need her to do and look confident doing it. She doesn't look like you're faking it, you know? The extension on her kicks is, is real. Um, she, Even though she's very decidedly anime, she looks good alongside the rest of the X-Men. Um, she can do any of the poses you've seen her do in Marvel vs. Capcom or in various comics, as I showed you in the, the review. And, I mean, and she looks amazing with the team. That's, that's the big thing, is that she accomplishes all this and looks great with the team. And screw what you've been hearing all these reviewers saying, she's too fragile, she does too much. Okay, then you stick with the Marvel Legends one. No one forced you to get her. But if you want a, a better figure than what we've been getting, she's the one. I mean, I, I, I can't tell you how much I've been playing with this figure. I mean, I put her in ninja poses and i've had her team up with wolverine and fly around doing stuff with uh, uh storm and you know i had her alongside uh chun li fighting guys i mean this for me and for people like me i'm pretty sure this is what figures are supposed to do you're supposed to feel like this playing with a figure number four sh figure arts dr strange burning flame version um i love this figure with a passion um this figure mine actually has as you can see and as you saw in the review he has the uh custom cape it's got a um a wire in it so you can pose it and do all that cool stuff once you get this figure and you get the special cape make him burn the <laughs> the other cape and other capes like that that you may have and just admire the shit out of him. Let me just look at him. The, the, every he he just blows away what you know Hasbro is doing. It's one of the few cases. I mean, not to say that if that's all you can get your hands on, that you know it's bad. No, it's not bad. It's just in comparison 
there's little comparison. You know what I mean? Um, everything that you're supposed to feel when you collect a figure, I felt with this. You know, when you're when you're collecting figures, when you're enjoying the figure, I felt with him. You could tell. I took so many pictures. You know, look in the review. You could tell. I mean, look, these are from the review. Look at the poses and all that. Um, he's one of those that like the, his presence on your shelf is just it's dope. He feels like he's as powerful as we've seen him be. And, you know, he's so much fun to pose. Nothing is restricted, even though by looking at him, you would think so. So, you know, ignore what some of the haters say. And if you see this figure, pick him up, especially if it's a good price. Three. SH Figure Arts Justice League Flash. Um, I love this figure and the strange thing about it is I hated this character this version of the character in the films but I started collecting the figures and you know as I've said before I dig the designs most of the designs from the DCEU um, and when I finally got this figure in hand uh, well I should say when I got the Mattel version in hand I was able to appreciate the design more and, but the, the shortcomings of the Mattel version made me have to get this version. And when I got this version, I completely fell in love with the idea of this being a year one costume. Because let's be real, no matter what they do on screen or in whatever version of, you know, whatever medium you're first introduced to a character or their costume in, once you get it, that's your verse. You can do whatever you want. And in my universe, this is not spastic, weird Barry Allen, but this is regular Barry Allen that's an adult, you know, that is very capable. Kind of goofy at times, but he's not over the top, you know, super comedic. That's Wally West. And even Wally West in the comics was not that goofy. But the, the point I'm getting at, though, is that this figure made me love this rendition of The Flash. And once again, this is what a good figure does. The, the lack of limitations, you know, once you get the figure and you pose him and you make him do what you want him to do, you start to see what could be with this character. Possibilities for situations you could put him in. Situations that would be awesome to see pop up on screen. Uh, team ups and, you know, just different things that, you know, as a kid, this is how we vibed with our action figures. And now as adults, you can still do that to a degree, you know. Even if you never get to it fully, at least you could do some photos. If you do take photos, you could take some photos of your Flash teaming up with other people. And, you know, that's literally where I fall. You know, I, I want to, this figure makes me want to do that and makes me see those things. And the fact that he is such a well done figure allows me to do it. So, you know, even though the Mafex one is nice too, when you get that extra head, this one is awesome and it's 40 bucks so it's like come on you can't complain it's it's something that's more attainable for the majority of us so yeah dope and that's why he's here you had to know that a common rider was going to show up on this list you had to I absolutely had to know this is the sh figure arts takeshi hongo now this figure is not perfect. He does have some limitations, mostly with the lower part of his jacket interrupting his leg articulation. But the articulation is there. But the point of the matter with this guy is, even with slight limitations, he represents more of what uh, Figure Arts has kind of mastered over the years. I mean, they started with Ichigo. And the fact that they're continuing with him and giving us different versions. I mean, we have so many suit variations and we have finally the actual, you know, plain clothes version of the character, you know, his civilian identity as Takeshi Hongo. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is Kamen Rider number one, Ichigo. I've reviewed at least three versions of this guy, four actually, on my channel. Um, two of them are from movies. Um, he's just, he's, he's a legend. The guy re started this role in the, what, mid-60s, 66, I want to say, and he reprised the role just a couple years ago in his, what, 70s, something like that? 
it's nuts because we don't usually get that not in live action you know sometimes voice actors because adam west played uh batman a couple times again before he passed but uh you rarely get that you know and it's a big deal when you do get that and to have such a legendary character and such a favorite of mine finally represented in plain clothes like we see him in the you know the tv series and the films it's just it's a dream come true when i first saw this figure it was unclear that we actually were gonna get him as a a, a, a standard release and we finally got him I mean, I said it when I saw him. I'm like, if I have to email, you know, figure arts and bug them, I'm going to bug them to see if I can get this figure. Because this is one of my favorites. Absolute favorites. Up there with Superman, Captain America, Batman, etc., etc. And this figure, I mean, mm, it just, it's dope. And he can do the I'm about to turn into a Kamen Rider pose. Come on. It's just, oh, it's dopeness. Just dopeness. Honorable mentions. Silver Surfer from Marvel Legends. It's a Walgreen exclusive. Um, you know I love Silver Surfer. He's one of my favorite characters. For a long time, he was my favorite Marvel character. They finally did him up properly in the Marvel Legends style. Um, but he would have just been another Marvel Legend on this list. So I couldn't have done that. Same with these guys. Uh, Cable and uh, Bishop. Um, it's 90s goodness but I had to put them in the honorable mention as opposed to giving them the slot because one is the Hyperion body and one is a modded, uh, I want to say Nuke body. That's what he reminds me of. I could be wrong because I don't have Nuke, but you know, I don't want to have this, this whole entire thing full of Marvel Legends, no matter how cool the, the, the Marvel Legends characters actually are. Um, and you know me, I'm an X-Men fan, so I had to show some love to the X-Men. This cable is just on a different level. The Revel Tech, Yamaguchi, or Legacy of Revel Tech, um, Daisuke, uh, Jigen. Now you guys know how much I love these figures. Essentially he is the same figure as Lupin, which is part of the reason why he didn't end up on the list, other than honorable mention. But man, look at the fun. Just look at him. It's so much fun. And you will be seeing him later in a, another video teamed with the number one figure. I mean, the amount of fun that I have with these kind of figures almost allowed him to take the one, number one spot. So, you know, I had to kind of calm it down and be like, oh, we gotta use some logic. We gotta use a figure that, that hits all the marks. And I think the number one does a good job. But this Gigan figure is pretty dope. Revel Tech knocking it out the park. It's kind of crazy because Psylocke could have been up here and she's not. So anyway, these are the, uh, my honorable mention. And the number one most fun figure that I purchased in 2018 is... SH Figuarts Shinkochu Seho Kamen Rider Skull. Um, as of recent, uh, SH Figuarts has been on a roll. Uh, we, they had a rough patch with their Star Wars stuff and they kind of switched up their approach when they started to make more screen accurate Kamen Riders. So we had some figures that were not part of the Shinkochu Seho uh, line that they were just done in the regular figure art style and they were so accurate. And then you had all the Marvel stuff that was pretty damn accurate and then they went back to their Kamen Riders and they, they knocked it the fuck out of the park. Sculpts are on point the first time as you saw with the uh, Takeshi Hongo figure. They're doing several versions of suits for different characters. And then in the SS line, which this is part of, they are doing renewal versions of older figures, but super accurate representation of those characters in their suits. So for fans like me, fans of Kamen Rider and fans of specific shows, like I am a fan of Double, me and my son, my younger son, Little Strider, and we watched it all the way through he loved it double is his favorite writer and uh i dug uh skull you know i reviewed him before and that was a renewal and this is another renewal and this is also part of what i've said before about bandai making the best stuff because they do it until they get it right whereas you know hasbro they do it and they get it out there and that's it some characters depending on the popularity 
they will go back and they will get them right so that they can get more money. But ultimately, they just want to do it, get your money at the time, and then move on to something else to get your money and move on. Whereas, you know, Figure Arts does a lot of things to keep getting your money, but at least from a craft perspective, you're seeing them go back and refine what they do to give you the best possible product. I'm gonna get more in depth with this in a dual review that I'm doing with a friend of mine from Brazil on YouTube. He'll be doing some on his channel and I'll be doing some on mine. But all these things I pointed out is what encompasses a great figure. And the reason why he's number one is because this is beyond a great figure. And I'm just, I'm glad to have him. I think if you find him for a good price, you should too, because the only thing that's bad about them is the price. And there you have it. That is my most fun and most unfun of 2018. Um, had some good ones on there, some great ones. There's a lot of ones I wasn't able to get to, and uh, you'll probably see reviews of them soon. And with that, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been watching all my videos, commenting, you know, who's new subscribers, old subscribers, folks that just have, you know, contributed in some way, shape, or form to my channel. Um, thank you so much because, you know, it makes me feel like this is worth doing when I have people who are involved. Um, I'm making a couple changes with things, especially my Patreon. Um, I, 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 I have some ideas on how to better utilize Patreon because, you know, up till now it's been kind of meh. But, uh, you know, I'm just glad to have people that are interested and that, you know, have something to say and something to add to the uh, conversation. Because believe it or not, this is not easy work. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you want to do and there's not enough time to do all of the things, you know. And I've had some amazing ideas that I wasn't able to quite, uh, you know, bring to pass. So, um... And of course, my uh, my phone had to go off while I'm talking. Um, but thank you. It's you know I sincerely thank you for your help, your attention, and you know I have more on the way. Uh, last year was a difficult year, part of it at least. You know the the tail end was very difficult, and uh, you know a lot of things happened. And at first, I thought I was going to quit and just be done with YouTube because it's just an extra thing to worry about. But I think that it's helped, doing videos has helped me uh, relax a little bit and kind of take the edge off of some of the stuff that's been going on. And, you know, I'm gonna just view it a little bit differently. And, uh, you know, more like my happy place, you know, as it is with collecting action figures. And it'll probably continue to, to, to help me that way. But uh, you guys have been a big help. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, as always. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more because there's so much more on the way. And as always, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And you guys have been great. Peace outside.